Hey guys, welcome back to Total Tactics FPL. It's Fran here, and I'm back with my Game Week 13 review. Uh, it was an absolutely terrible week, as you can see, obviously, just 29 points this week. A shambolic week, to be honest. Around 100, minus 400% of a red arrow this week, uh, dropping from 38,000 in the world to somewhere around 170, 180,000 in the world. And effectively, every single move that I made this week, uh, especially going from option one versus option two when i kind of outlined my game week 13 transfer plans went wrong i also made a last minute decision to actually switch to a salah captaincy because of the news that darwin wasn't actually going to play in that game and for me it kind of seemed interesting to actually go for a salah captaincy him playing in the central position versus nottingham forest with the hopes that he could also get a penalty too given that nottingham forest have actually been very very lackluster in that department also giving away a lot of free chances for a lot of opposing teams now, of course, Liverpool actually played horrifically. One of the big, I would say, detractors to the Salah captaincy as well was Thiago getting an ear infection. But that was post-deadline, and that obviously made things much worse. And just simply being honest with myself, if I go back to my transfer plans, right? Option one was going for Ben White, so that would have been a plus four points over Shar. It would have allowed me to keep Kane, which is probably seven points over Foden, um, who was the hit that I took. And then obviously when you, when you factor in the hit and the Salah captaincy, it all really went to uh, shit, to be quite honest, and it was probably a net minus 30 if I made some better decisions. But I, I own up to those decisions, and there's nothing really to, to do other than just see if I actually regretted the logic. I think Salah playing in the cent central position made, made sense specifically because it's not in Forest, not just because it was Salah getting the chance to play in the central position. For me, the fixture mat mattered a lot. I just cast my eyes back to when... Haaland had a fixture for Nottingham Forest, and we were all captaining Salah back then. What the option was, really, when you're playing one of the worst defenses in the league, and, and, and Nottingham Forest surely are top two at this point. So the fact that this Liverpool team actually weren't able to score versus them is quite downing. And it's also, I think, another good eye test to actually show that this Liverpool defense has been very, very poor as of late. So very interesting to actually see where people will go when we talk about the Liverpool defense in the future, because it was not a positive sign whatsoever. However, I'm still quite happy to own Liverpool attackers, mainly because Leeds are so out of shape themselves. Uh, I do have Darwin in my team, so that was a huge mistake. I have to own up to that as well. Going for a transfer quite early, knowing that Darwin had a knock is probably not advisable. I wouldn't really have advised it to anyone else. I did want to do that for a gamble just so that I could make some future planning uh, work out. So I had some kind of de defensive plans in mind as well, potentially to go from Neko Williams to Gabriel in one transfer. And I still actually have the option to do that now, so it's quite tempting uh, now that I have the money in the bank to do that, to do that. And having Foden next week, hopefully with the start, is going to be a huge plus. We also will get uh, Foden in the near future versus Fulham, so that's going to be a huge plus as well. So Darwin versus Leeds, hopefully a great matchup. And I'm probably going to keep Darwin towards the end of the World Cup as long as he's actually fit and he doesn't have any kind of long-term issues with the kind of hamstring tightness that he suffered. Solanke can also save this week as well. As I said, I'm around 170,000 in the world, a big drop from 38,000. But, you know, you have to kind of own up to, to it in the game week. Uh, just laugh a little bit, enjoy the red arrow, enjoy the likes on Twitter for people seeing that you're suffering, and just go on. I think at this point in the season, we're around 200,000 in the world. That's a worst case if, if if Bowen gets a haul, if maybe West Ham get a clean sheet and Solanke gets a red card. So so whatever. So what, right? Um, We just have to move on and just simply play with the team going forwards. And you have two wild cards left. You have presumably a lot of chips left. The season is still very, very ripe for anyone to actually get much better ranks, much more green arrows, and so on and so forth. So I, I'm really not too fussed about it. Uh, Andreas was the one person who actually did somewhat decent for me this week. Um, but of course, he would have been featuring on pretty much any option of my teams outside of the Darwin Foden hit. So in essence, I, I got a little bit lucky, I suppose, to actually benefit from Andreas. But we don't know, obviously, what Darwin could have done if he actually started. But that's kind of the layout of the land for Game Week 13. As far as my actual transfer plans, these are the moves that I actually have in mind. It's actually very, very simple because we really want to be going to these Arsenal players even though they have a game versus Chelsea. I think Chelsea haven't looked particularly threatening as of late when it comes to defence. They have been actually quite resolute at the back. We saw that with the clean sheets lately with Kepa having some heroic performances and Casemiro kind of having to pretty much salvage the game uh, in the die embers of the game. So that is quite interesting to think about whether I actually want to invest into an Arsenal attacker or an Arsenal defender heading towards a very close Chelsea game because Arsenal do actually have three, in, in a sense, fixtures that are nice, uh, two, two out of three fixtures that are nice heading up to the World Cup. And maybe you'd like actually, you'd actually like to sidestep a move towards an Arsenal defender because of that Chelsea game where maybe Chelsea could threaten. But I still think Arsenal will always break that Chelsea clean sheet. Uh, and I think Saka is someone who's very capable of doing that specifically because he's also the pen taker of the Arsenal team. When we look at Crystal Palace, you have the exact same player in Zaha, who's a little bit more expensive than Saka. 
I do think one transfer, of course, could simply just be to go towards Saka this week, where moving towards Saka, I'd have 0 0.5 in the bank, hopefully to upgrade someone else in the team. Presumably that's going to be maybe an upgrade on someone like Shar or even a downgrade, just looking for someone who actually has a better fixture. That still kind of locks me in towards uh, triple Newcastle defense next week. It is going to be Newcastle at home. I think they've still been very, very resolute at the back. We've talked about that lately. Yes, Kane broke that clean sheet. It was a little bit sad and bittersweet, of course, because I owned Kane in the previous week. But the less said about that, the better. And I think simply put, Newcastle defense is something you still would like to ride out towards the World Cup with. And Shar can then be a transfer that I force out when he plays Chelsea uh, in that matchup. Because I think Aston Villa and Southampton are still fantastic games to actually own Newcastle defense over. The alternative move, of course, is if I am very fearful that Newcastle defense is going to do well. And I actually think that Saka might have some issues. Um, if anything, kind of props up and Zaha actually seems like someone I'd like to keep. Then I obviously could just go from Neko Williams to someone like Gabriel this week. And I think this is a bit more of an interesting move because I don't really have much confidence really in Nottingham Forest continuing to keep clean sheets because they don't really get to play Liverpool every week. So we have another option here for going for Gabriel. And I think this is quite an interesting option too. It actually uses all the money I have in the bank. But I still have the uh, opportunity to also move away from Shar potentially in the future. And that's simply also to, to think about how poor, for example, the Andreas game is next week. I probably will need quite a solid uh, bench as well. And in a sense, bring Gabriel in and then having Shar come in next week, that could work out for my team, right? Even if, even if I bench Gabriel. But I don't think the upside is really there in that move. So I much prefer Zaha to Saka. They're very like for like in terms of what they offer you on the team. Both very good right now on the ball and also simply get you the set pieces for the penalties. So that's kind of the scenario there. And I'm pretty happy to actually move towards next week with both Foden and Darwin, provided that Darwin's actually fit for the Champions League. Remember, of course, um, you know, I made this mistake this week. Don't do it, please. Um, wait for your transfers towards the deadline if you can. At least wait until the Champions League games are over because we could have some last minute injuries um, and, and more insights really to tell before the game week 14 deadline. So that's going to be me for my transfer plans this week for game week 14. Terrible, terrible, terrible red arrow. Um, but you just have to move on. And to be honest, I'm actually quite happy. Mostly because I've been playing football manager this week. But I hope you guys have a wonderful week ahead. And I'll see you guys very, very shortly for the cheat sheet videos and so on and so forth. So take care, guys.